you know, what we're going to do is we're actually going to start integrating our view model into the app so we will actually start to see the um, cells and we're going to see all the actual data on the screen so it's actually going to show all the possible teams so in order to do that let's get started and um, so what we're going to do in our charts view uh, controller chance view controller we're going to create an instance of our view model that we copied over from the previous video so view model and if you've not watched um, that video I will link it and you can go and reference it to watch it and get the resources so what we're going to do is we're going to do this so we're going to say private lazy var and we're just going to call this um our teams view model um and then what we're going to do is create an instance of this so teams view model like so and then now what we're going to do is we're going to actually start to um, replace the stuff in the cell so now let's start hooking up our cell to this view model so what we need to do is we basically need to get each item out of the view model and pass it into our cell so let's start from the top so the first one that we need to do it with is with number of rows and section so in here, we want to basically return all the possible teams. So in order to do that, what we need to do is go into our view model, we need to get the teams and we simply just need to return the count. So what this will do is it will literally loop through every single item inside of this array and it will return the total. Um, and in this case it's 20. So this will give us tw all 20 teams. So in this function, in this function here, we need to actually get the team and pass it into this function so we can configure each team. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new property in here called team. So you can so you can see this. And then we're going to get our teams view model teams. And we're actually going to use something called subscripting. So what this allows us to do subscripting is it allows us to get an item at an index. So just to show you at a very basic level, and uh, what we can do is we're just going to basically get the first team in the array and we're just going to print this to the console. And I'm just going to put a breakpoint here so you can see it in the console as well. So let's stop and let's run this. Cool. So now if I just make this um, a bit bigger so you can see it, if I expand it, you can see here that it's actually printed out the first item in the array because we put in zero. So we go to teams, you can see here, Arsenal is the first one. I can actually directly do this in the console as well. So all we're gonna do to do that is we're just gonna clear the terminal here and we're just gonna type in PO and we're gonna say teams view model dot teams. And then if I type in one, you can see here, is that I can actually see the, the second um, item in the array, which is Aston Villa. So that's just a brief little introduction into debugging and breakpoints. Now, later on in the next videos, I'm gonna show you how to debug this because we actually are gonna come across a problem, but let's continue and focus on setting up the teams for the table view cell. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're simply the next thing we're going to do is we're simply just going to pass this into the configure function. So let's delete this print statement and let's refactor this function here. So what I'm going to do so we can see this side by side is I'm just going to hit this icon here. We just got to add an editor onto the right. On my keyboard, I'm going to hit command shift O and this will let me open up a Swift file directly and quickly. So we go directly go to the teams table view cell. So now we can see them side by side. And what I'm going to do in the configure function, I'm actually going to add a underscore and I'm going to type in here item and I'm going to type in here team. So what I'm basically saying here is I'm basically omitting um, the parameter name. So I just pass in the value um, and it's going to be a type team. So just to show you this in practice, if I was to not include that underscore, yeah, it will look like this. 
So you can see here how it has item, and then I just pass in the team. But if I if I omit, if I want to omit this parameter and put an underscore, you can see now that I don't need the item. I can just directly pass in the team, so it will be configure team. So a, a better way of doing this with Swift actually is to make it as readable as possible. So what we'd actually do here is we'd actually have with. So you can see how it reads like English. So it'll be like configure with and then team. So let's add that in now. So we've got configure with team. So it reads like English. So if you actually read the um, Swift guidelines and the documentation online, you'll see that they, they like to make things as readable as possible. So let's do configure with team to make it even clearer. So now that we have the um, item here, we can now start to configure our UI. So let's work through this and start to set this up. So the first thing we want to set up is the background color. So what we're going to do is we're going to do item dot um, ID, which is the team um, enum, and then we're going to get the background color from there. So background color, background. And then what we're going to do is the same thing here. So we're going to do item dot ID dot badge. And then in here we're going to say item dot name. And then here we're going to say item dot founded. And this one in the previous video, you said I was going to, I said I was going to treat you, and this is where I'm about to treat you. So here we're actually going to use our enum to actually set this up. And we're going to use some string interpolation. So what we're going to do here is rather than say manager. We're going, to, we're going to do a forward slash and then we're going to do the parentheses and then we're going to say item dot manager dot raw value. Now this isn't going to work right now. And the reason why that's not going to work is because as it says, um, manager, um, so Sorry, so item dot manager dot job dot row value. And the reason go work is because as it says here, it's because it says value of type job type has no member raw value. So the reason why that is is because if we just quickly just jump to this file, so we just do command shift O and then job type. You can see here with enums, you can actually give an enum a raw value. So right now, this doesn't have a raw value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this and give it a raw value for string. And for this case, the raw value is going to be manager. And for this case, the raw value is going to be head coach. So you can see how you can enums are really powerful because you can basically set up a type safe type or identifier and give it a raw value that you want to present. So you don't have to just be strings, it can be integers or anything else. So it needs to, so you can see here that we have manager and head coach. So now if we go back to it, um, let me just build it. It, it doesn't complain no more because we've now given it a raw value of a string. So depending on the job type that we set up in the view model, it will either display manager or head coach. And then in here, we're going to do a bit more of string interpolation where we're going to say item dot manager dot name. So that'll put that manager name there. And for the text, we're going to basically say item dot um, info and that'll go there. So the last thing we need to set up is this button. And I'm going to show you another way of where, how we can use enums by put using static constants to basically organize um, assets or strings, sorry, or yeah, strings with keys or anything that you need to just basically have a clean, um, single centralized place where you can just reference it later. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a new file in resources. So we're going to create a new file in here and we're going to call it asset.swift. So assets. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna store a reference to all the assets that we need in here using an enum. So we're gonna create an enum called assets. And then we're gonna create, rather than using a case, we're actually going to use a static constant. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do static let, and then this is going to be called play, and then this is going to hold the image for the play. So all we need to do is we just got to copy this bit here, like this. And then in order for this to work, we're going to, need to import at the top here, UI kit, like so. And then we're also going to do another asset for, for pause. So let's copy this and let's rename this to pause. And then rather than this being play, we're going to use the pause SF symbol. So if I just go back into the SF symbols app and type in pause, you can see, tada, yeah, we've got to use this one. So pause. So we can like toggle between the two. So now what we're going to do is we're going to basically, depending on, on whether the item is playing or not, we're going to basically switch between the two different icons. So here on this line here, we're going to basically do item dot is playing and then we're going to use a question mark i'll explain this in a minute as well we're going to say assets so if it is playing then we're going to say assets dot um pause and if it isn't playing we're going to say assets dot play so what this is, is it's basically just a ternary, op it's called a ternary operator. So what we're basically saying here is if the condition here that we put in here is true, so if the result of this condition is true, then we want to execute this here. If it isn't true, then we want to execute this here. So it's a lot um, cleaner because alternatively what you could do is you could just write an if statement so we could just do this alternative we could have just done if item dot is playing and then we could have done else here and we literally could have just like set the images like so so we could have just done assets dot pause here and then just copy actually copy and paste this and then dot play so there's two ways of doing this so we could have used an if statement like so but using a ternary operator, you can just see how much cleaner it is just having it on one line. So let's just do that. So let's just delete that and we'll have our ternary operator like so. And now what we're going to do is we're actually going to run the app and see what we get. So let's stop that from running. And now let's see what we get. So we should see all our teams in a list. Exciting time. So let's run this. And oh, so we only get to see Arsenal. Hmm. I wonder why that is. Well, the reason why is because, remember before, we set this to zero, so we're only going to see the first one in the array. So what we actually want to do is we actually want to access the item in the entire array, so each row and each item in the array. So in order to do that, we use this called index path. And then when we do index path, we do dot row so what this is basically saying is i want you to basically give me the identifier or the you know the number in the row that you're currently on and we said here that there's going to be 20 rows so this is going to go from 0 to 19 so this will now go when this executes 20 times this will basically give you the row that is currently on and you can then access that within the array so now let's rerun it And nice, you can now see that we have all the items in each row. So let's scroll all the way down here. And then cool, we've got all our items in the row, we've got all our teams. And we've obviously, we've obviously got the best team in England at the moment, or my favorite team at the top, Arsenal. So that was this video done. In the next video, we're gonna learn about delegates and protocols. So we're gonna hook up some actions to this button here. So we're gonna to start to manipulate um, and start to change some of the views as well. So stick around, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Deuces.